Amen, brothers and sisters. We thank the Lord for the opportunity to continue our ongoing study on Course 131, Dispensation, Seasons, and Times. Brothers and sisters, this is a course that it wasn't easy to develop because, like we said, there's so many raw emotions, damaged emotions over the years in history. And so different members of the human family tend to be defensive about certain things, and it ought not to be so. If you are born again, we are supposed to be open to understanding of our roots, to understanding of things that went wrong, and to ask the Lord, what shall we do? And the scripture is very clear. In the book of Psalm 11, verse 3, if the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? I was told in Second Chronicles chapter 7, 13, and 14, if the heavens are shut over a people, if anything is wrong, if the people who are called by his name shall humble themselves, pray, repent, and seek his face, he will hear from heaven. And so what is going on is that without dealing with the past, you know what? It keeps repeating itself. Whether you're considering what is going on in Europe right now, you know, some of things that were not dealt with in the past, they resurrect. Brothers and sisters, but then the Lord told us something clearly yesterday in the lesson 11, which was the lamentation that even though the dispensation of the gospel has gotten into the hands of the children of Ham, there is a lamentation is that it is almost dead on arrival. Because without a compass, without understanding the past, there is the tendency to just go and repeat some of the errors of the past. And so today, we just want to share something. I'm just going to give summary and you go read the notes. The note is this is the longest of the notes. Go read it up and to all apprehend the fullness of what the Lord wants to share. Father in heaven, the great I am who I am. We we'll thank you for the opportunity to hear you speak to us, rebuke, correction, instruction, direction. Bring it on, Lord, and let us apprehend your determinate counsel. That is the dwelling place. That is the place of safety, to live in your will. Let your name be glorified. Holy Spirit, take the things of Yeshua and show us now. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, a major assignment of the church that proceeded from the natural bowels of Ham is to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom, to rediscover and proclaim it. It's the assignment the Lord gave to the church out of Ham. Like we said in the lesson 11, it's not every day that every preacher that comes preaches a nice sermon that you grab. No, go check what is the person practicing, what is the person doing. If there is no kingdom con culture concept that undergets that work, you know the person is still operating in religion. Because what the Lord wants us to know is that everything that has happened in history is about the kingdom. Genesis 1. What is Genesis 1? Religion teaches us this creation of the world. Genesis 1 is beyond creation. Genesis 1 is about the extension of the kingdom of heaven in the earth realm. Genesis 3, religion teaches about sin. But Genesis 1 is extension of the kingdom and Adam and Eve becoming, as it were, the sign of Elohim to govern the universe. The heaven, even the heavens are the laws. The earth he has given to the sons of men. Psalm 115 verse 16 says, so man was given to govern the earth. You hear some people say, Holy Spirit is governor of the universe, of the earth. It's not so. Man is the governor made by Elohim in the image of Elohim to take care of the earth dream. And so Genesis 2 is about the constitution of the kingdom. Adam, you can do everything you want, eat everything you want. Don't eat that one. As a constitution, Genesis 3, religion teaches about the entry of sin into the world. It was more than entry of sin. Genesis 3 is Satan tricking Adam and Eve to hand over the mantle of the earth rim as governor of the earth to him. And so the day Eve disobeyed Elohim and ate and gave to Adam and he ate, the mantle of authority over this earth dream that was in their hand was handed over to Satan. And Satan became the god of this world. And that is what he's been doing to oppose the program of Elohim, fight the promise of the seed of the woman that will restore the kingdom. And brothers and sisters, 
<clears throat> the Jews had a holding covenant that was to be like a schoolmaster to hold humanity, you know, in, in a state of check until the seed will come. Yeshua HaMashiach, who restored the kingdom. And he was to restore the kingdom through two parts. The first part was his incarnation, invade from heaven, invade the earth rim, be incarnated in the womb of Mary, and take on everything we go through. Suffer it all in the flesh, so that you could condemn sin and all the things Satan uses to manipulate man in the flesh, and pay the price at the cross of Calvary for taking away the authority and mantle from Satan. That's why when he are resurrected, one of the things said in Matthew 28, 18 is that all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Having finished his assignment through his death on the cross, burial and resurrection, he received back the mantle of the earth rim. And he gave us power to proclaim the good news that we should, human beings should not live under the dominion of Satan, which is what sin is all about. But if human beings should and can be subject to the authority of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and become his assigned in the earth rim. So that means that his first coming was to pay the price for citizens of the kingdom to be brought in and then prepare the way for his return when he will come to rule and reign in the manifest kingdom. This framework is what the Lord wants the church out of Africa to rediscover and proclaim to people that it's no longer about religion. You see, these sons of shame got trapped under the veil of Moses, that that veil, it prevented them from seeing the king of kings when he was incarnated as a babe. They said, no, this cannot be a promised Messiah. They were waiting for a Messiah coming from heaven, riding on a steed to chase out the Romans. The sons of Japhet, took the gospel, reconfigured it to Christian religion, which they can handle because they are very analytical and they like to analyze things and package things and then, okay, build church buildings. If you go in on certain days of the week, you will encounter God there and there will be a clergy that will mediate between a holy God and unholy people. Now the Lord says that religious presentation of the gospel has done more harm than good. And so the mandate is given to the church out of Africa and Africa, America and the West Indies and the Caribbean and Europe and the Middle East and parts of Asia is to simply go rediscover the gospel of the kingdom, proclaim it and declare it. Why is it so? It is through such proclamation that the one new man of Elohim will emerge. They cannot emerge by religion. Religion divides. Religion divides people on the basis of their races, on the basis of their gender, on the basis of their age. It divides people on the basis of their socioeconomic status. And that's what religion does. Unfortunately, in Africa today and the land of Ham, there's been whole scale embrace of religion and people are just, you know, firing off religion, building big cathedrals, gathering millions of people around a man and people are not empowered. They all say, no, no, my children, that's not the way to go. The gospel of the kingdom presents Yeshua, not just as Lord, I mean, not just as Savior who will save you from your sin, and then when you, uh, when you finish your tenure on earth, it takes you to heaven. But more than that, the gospel of the kingdom is present him as king who will rule our life on this earth. And if he doesn't rule our life, he will not guarantee us a place in the world to come. That is the summary of the gospel of the kingdom. That we will live under his sovereign rule in the present and allow Holy Spirit to guide us in all things, in every decision, in everything he, is, he shows us the priority of the Father. And so the gospel of the kingdom is one that has room for everyone, male, female, young, old, has room for rich and poor because we have one king. Therefore, no one is a king but the king of kings himself. And every preacher's duty is not to point people to yourself. Come and come to me and become your, I become your daddy. I become your daddy. I become my sons and daughters. No, every preacher like John the Baptist deliberately decreases and points people to the king. And everybody comes under the sovereign rule of the king. Then 
you know what? We embrace the gifts and callings he puts in us. We begin to function. Those in the marketplace are as effective, even more effective than those in pulpit ministry. That is the truth. Because the marketplace is the, is the last frontier of the gospel. There you have to encounter all manner of people from all manner of religious colorations. All manner of gods, they are under them. And you have to encounter them daily. Most of the full-time ministers are cloistered in their pulpits. They don't know life outside the pulpit. Some haven't gone shopping before. Some haven't done anything outside the four walls of the church. So they are limited. You know, brothers and sisters, when we understand the gospel of the kingdom, you see, that's a simple, uncomplicated gospel. The Lord wants the church out of the lawyers of, of harm to preach. And I want to repeat again something we've said on and on and on that by now it should, it should get into us. It is the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom that will bring about the connection of the remnant of shame, harm, and Japheth into the one new man that Paul spoke about in Ephesians chapter 2 and Ephesians chapter 3. And Colossians chapter 3, the one new man of Elohim, which is the now agenda of Yeshua, the emergence of the one new man, the remnant, the Omega church, the fourth race, neither of Ham, nor of, of Japheth, nor of, of Shem. You know what? The one new man's identity is in Yeshua. It's not in the preacher. It's not in the organization. The loyalty is to Yeshua. And the spirit of Elohim makes it happen to into inside everybody's heart, inside everybody's life. And the Lord wants us to know that this is something urgent. Because according to the book of uh, Acts 3, 19 uh, to 21, it said that Yeshua will remain in heaven in verse 21 until the time of restitution of all things. The restitution of all things is to restore the touch of Elohim, that Elohim will make room for all members of his family to have a go in capturing the essence of the gospel and proclaiming it. And so that one new man, you know, I saw a picture by a brother, Apostle Ron, yesterday. It was such a lovely picture. He saw a remnant of Shem, Ham, and Japheth together, one like brothers, and just receiving the grace of the Lord in each other. Brothers and sisters, the Lord wants us to know that we need to go that way. If you are doing a cultural gospel, you are missing it. You are doing an African church, you are missing it. Doing an African-American church, you are missing it. Doing a Caribbean church or West Indies church, you are missing it. We got to be about discovery and proclamation of Yeshua as king of the kingdom. And we are all invited to be members of the family of Elohim and citizens of the kingdom. Our church, our church the church congregations are mere places of accountability and fellowship. They shouldn't be our identity. Our identity is in the king and his kingdom. And we need to proclaim it until everybody gets it. So you can you imagine across the world when everybody is being pointed to Yeshua as king, onto the kingdom as our identity, then it means that it doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter where you go, you always find people who have the same heart, the same mind with you. The color of the skin doesn't matter, the height doesn't matter, the pocket doesn't matter, you know, the, the gender doesn't matter. What matters is Yeshua in us, the hope of glory. This is the gospel the Lord has committed to the hand of the seed of Ham, the remnant out of Ham, that in proclaiming it, the remnant out of Shem will hear this gospel and will receive it. The remnant out of Japheth will hear this gospel, receive it, and the one new man will emerge. That is what the Lord began to show us. This August will be 26 years ago when this cause was first given. And this, for 10 years, the Lord had to prepare us, had to purge, sanctify, you know, had to prepare us 10 years before Global School of Ministry launched out. And look at the interesting thing. Nobody knew, nobody planned it. But 100 years after Sousa Street, 2006, that's when the Lord launched at the Global School of Ministry to proclaim the Teach, Train, Equip, Activate, Release paradigm. Through it, the gospel of the kingdom is proclaimed. It doesn't matter whether you are Jew or Gentile. It doesn't matter your background. It's easy to proclaim. It's easy to understand and easy to receive that we have one king, Yeshua, 
is the king of all, and all who submit to him, they become members of the family of Elohim and citizens of the kingdom, and we have a rule to support one another, to love one another, to walk in unity, to walk in alignment, and it doesn't matter where we are. So it's a new paradigm. And some people ask the Apostle George, you know, you know, there's some people who didn't understand what we're going about. They thought it was about we doing what others are doing, starting branches here, and then Lord said, no. Be other people. I remember a young man somewhere in West Africa said to me, you know, many years ago, I think about 12 years ago or so, he said, you know, I want to submit to your ministry. I want to hand over, become a branch of a rise. And we said to him, brother, no. The Lord gave you this vision. You know what? We're going to support you as much as we can with what we can, you know, to make a foolproof of this ministry and succeed in it. You know, you don't have to submit to us. You don't have to be you don't have to be a branch of what we are doing. No. The original thing the Lord gave to you, we stand with you. And looking back at what the Lord has done, that through him over maybe over 100 to 150 people are now ministers of the gospel because he took the Global School of Ministry and he networked them through that. He's leading IMF and from a young man, he became a factor in the country. You cannot ignore him. Brothers and sisters, we have a duty towards one another, strengthen one another, support one another. And that's why you cannot mix old wine with new wine. You can't take new wine and put in old white skin. There are a lot of people want to, oh, they want to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom, but they want to do it with the old white skin of Christian religion. It doesn't work. If you make the building the church, you can't preach the gospel of the kingdom. You make the organization the church, you cannot preach the gospel of the kingdom because they are contrary. The gospel of kingdom is all about Yeshua Hamashiach. Him alone. He is the only superstar in the kingdom. We are all part of him. And that's why no pastor should call anybody my member. Don't call the church my church. Don't say Founders Day. No, you do not found you didn't found any church. Oh men and brethren, don't forget there are four types of churches. The church of men, where you are a founder of the church, you own the people. Then the church of Satan, people who go to the occult to get, you know, charms to with which to do ministry, pseudo miracles, pseudo prophecies, they put in their tongue to say things. That's the church of Satan. That's the wheat. I mean, the tear in the wheat church. The church of men is one Paul said their God is their belly. Then there's a hybrid church, the mixture. And there is the kingdom church. The kingdom church is the one the Lord wants his remnant out of Africa to proclaim, to declare, to live out because the now agenda of the Most High is the emergence of the one new man. The Lord will not discriminate in his house. The mantles are given for purpose of driving his assignment at any particular time. Dispensations, seasons, and times, the times of the one new man is now. Brothers and sisters, whatever you're doing, anywhere you are, proclaim this gospel. Don't do churchianity. Don't do ABC Christianity. Attendance, building, cash. It doesn't make any sense. You might make all the money, but you know what? It will be like a canker in your mouth. Brothers and sisters, don't try to make anybody your member. We have only one master. He's the master of all. Let's make everybody his member. That's what discipleship is all about. The gospel is about discipling the nations a person at a time, bringing people under the subjection of the king of kings. And how can you bring people if you yourself are not a disciple? Disciples will disciple other people. And that's what Paul told Timothy, you know what, what is committed to you? Look for faithful men committed to them that they may teach others also. So those of you in this class, you know what I want you to do is that you know that you can extend this grace, these truths, by sharing the video. Not only by sharing it, by raising these things for conversation. Raise it, whether on your status, whether on Facebook posts, in groups. Raise it. Let the conversation be all over the cyberspace. Let the knowledge of the glory of the Lord fill the whole earth as waters cover the sea. Take your part in it. Take your part and occupy where you are. Let the gospel you are doing is one that is not about churchianity. Reject it, renounce it, and embrace Yeshua as your king, as your Lord, and proclaim him 
and him who was uh, incarnated, him who was crucified, him who rose from the dead, he who is seated in the heavenly throne. And that's why he's asked us to go and become instruments of extending the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. He is the high priest of that order. He seated at the right hand of Father in the throne of mercy. And you know what, brothers and sisters, he sees, he knows. Everything we're doing, how we're doing it. And you know what, the Lord wants us to know that our times on earth are measured. Some people do not ever think of time. But the truth is that time is measured. Time is measured. How long has the Lord appointed you? If the Lord tarries 90 years, 86, 85, what is it the Lord has appointed you? How old are you now? What are you doing with it? When you have strength, what are you doing with it? Brothers and sisters, this is a time to invest in the kingdom. Invest in the kingdom. Make sure your money is not used to foster religion. Make sure your money is not used to foster vanities and all manner of boastings and all manner of accumulation of stuff. Let it be invested in the gospel of the kingdom. Wherever you see the gospel of the kingdom being proclaimed, take your part in it. Take your part. The Lord knows you taking your part because nobody in the kingdom does anything all alone. No way. The Lord uses Paul to plant Apollos to water and Elohim to give the increase. What is your part in the gospel of the kingdom? The minimum is share the truth. Let other people hear the truth and don't embrace everything out of Africa or the land of Ham just because it came from Africa. No, if you do that, you miss it. What are they doing? Churchianity. They are going the way of Aaron. Then they've rejected Melchizedek. They are going the way of Nimrod. They've rejected servant leadership. So you got to check it up. Once you find that it meets the standard, then you can receive. Brothers and sisters, let's be wise. The Lord loves us and he wants us to know. I want you to share any five things you receive from what we shared or any three things you receive from what we shared today. Please, the main lesson is in writing and it's quite a long chapter. So what I've just done is to just give you a little bit of summary orally. For those in the classroom, go to the classroom and you're going to see the, uh, the, 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 the message today. Read it and do the assignment. We love you dearly. Let's pray. A father in heaven, the great I am, who I am, we, we thank you for the way you are going about this course. Taking your time to build it up. Lord, have your way and glorify Yeshua. Lord, as king in the church, he is building his church. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Lord, strengthen every servant of yours anywhere and everywhere. Let everyone operate in the authority of the king and in the power of the kingdom. Lord, be thou exalted in the kingdom church. Father, we know that, the, that hell is surrounding, trying to, you know, trying to nullify its effect. But you have already made a promise that the gates of hell shall not prevail against your church. Lord, come through for your church. Have your way, sovereign ruler of the universe. You are faithful beyond measure. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one second. Let me put up the camera and then we're going to just one second. Yes. Amen.